Hi guys, welcome to my two-door print state chronograph uh, 79 280p a uh, really quick overview of this watch. I just picked this up. It was new old stock, so new dead stock. Tudor no longer makes this watch anymore. Um, popular belief is because it's cannibalizing Daytona sales and I can totally understand why. And uh, I'm just going to quickly go over through the history of this watch and some of the features. So the 70 to, uh, to 79 280 P was released in the early 90s and um, basically Rolex create, makes this watch. The earliest version, so the pre, so this Tiger Woods endorsed, was endorsed by Tudor by this watch and when Tudor did that they called these, um, there's two versions of this watch basically uh, on a timeline scale there's a pre-Tiger and the post-Tiger. So the Tiger ones, the Tiger Wood ones will say Tiger on the face, on the dial, and uh, the pre-Tiger ones will not. And then there's also a transitional period version of this watch. So the earliest models, uh, they will, the transitional period ones are actually the early model ones. And the early model ones will actually have Rolex crowns. They will actually have a Rolex crown, a stamped Rolex crown. And then on the back, uh, it will actually have the Rolex markings on the back as well. And then the third thing to tell uh, if it is a uh, Rolex, uh, a transitional period 79 280 is it will say oyster date instead of prince date and your bracelet will be an oyster bracelet. So literally you, you have a ton of Rolex parts and the case is also a oyster case. Um, after the transition period, which is post-1996, around there, um, between 96 and 97, that's when they, Tudor has started creating their own um, uh, parts for this, or Rolex started making Tudor branded parts for this um, watch. So I, because this was new dead stock, the authorized dealer actually didn't know what particular year this is, but on my box, on the manual, or somewhere I saw, I think it was 97, but I'm not too sure. So it must have been right after the transition period, but before the Tiger uh, period. So with that being said, I have a Tudor crown um, here. I have a Tudor crown. The bracelet is a Tudor bracelet but it still uh, resembles, um, it does say it says Tudor on it, but the clasp is still resembles a oyster clasp, uh, very Rolex style. And um, it does not say oyster date, it says on the dial, uh, mine says Prince date. And yeah, so this is, to me, like a baby Daytona because it actually utilizes a Daytona bezel, identical bezel to Daytona's, certain Daytona's. The hands are identical to uh, Daytona. And uh, the case um, is believed to basically be an oyster case. So it's again, uh, identical to a steel, stainless steel Daytona. The, Obviously the heart of this watch is not going to be Rolex. The heart or the movement is a value um, 7750. The, and before you start pulling your hair out that, um, you know, that's such a common movement. Uh, there are four grades of the 7750 ETA movement. And now it is an ETA movement um, after the value got taken over. There is the standard, elaborate top and chronometer, and uh, there is quite a significant difference between the quality of those. And Tudor uses, um, there isn't very much information, but believe, some believe, most believe that Tudor does use a chronometer grade, which is the top grade. However, Rolex does not send Tudors out to get COSC 
uh, certified because that would raise the prices of two doors. And the whole point was to offer an affordable watch at a uh, subs subsidiary of Rolex. So mid and luxury watch. So they did not get the COSC certified, but the movement itself and the, the standard that the movement is made at, at Rolex, at the quality control definitely puts them at COSC uh, level. So that's, that's the movement. That is the movement there and that is the belief and uh, that's very believable um, especially on the earlier Tudor watches it is basically all the quality and control is Rolex so um, it's very believable that the movement will be the highest grade 7750 that they had so here we have uh, screw down pushers which is again very Daytona-esque uh, you have to unscrew these like this, screw down the pusher to start working the chrono. So you got your two pushers here, and then there you go. You got the red second hand on the chrono going, and I really love that red second hand. It it reminds me a lot of some of the limited edition Daytonas that came out in the mid two thousands that had a red second hand, um, and this one has a red second hand, so I think that's really cool. Press it again to stop, and then of course you can reset. And you should bounce back right away. Screw the pushers back down. Like so. And you're good to go. Um, you can sort of see the movement and how smooth it is on the second hand. It is extremely smooth. Um, I really, really like that. Um, it's a very easy to read watch. You have the magnifier, the Cyclops. Again, very roller, uh, Rolex-esque uh, magnifying your date, day of the month. Um, you, have, you have a quick date on this watch, even though it is older, uh, but you know nothing less is expected from a two-door. You have a quick date set. You have three positions as well to set the time. And very standard chronograph features. Um, I think this is an absolute bargain of a watch uh, for the price you can I got this for which was three thousand dollars Canadian brand new with a warranty um, you're basically getting a baby Daytona uh, yes uh, you're not getting a Rolex movement but you're getting extremely extremely high quality 7750 uh, movement which is extremely robust and easy to service so Every three years, drop it off at a Rolex dealer or a Tudor dealer, and they'll have a service for you, and then you'll have it back. Uh, the I bought a big reason why I bought this watch is because eventually, when I can afford it, I will buy Daytona, if that day ever comes. But I just love how it is so Daytona-esque, and um, I love that it is old, uh, a discontinued model. You cannot buy this anymore. And because Tudor was cannibalizing so many Rolex sales, if you look at the Tudor lineup now, none of them look like a Rolex, and they did that on, for a reason. Whereas in the past, like this watch, so much stuff was shared with Rolex that um, it was taking up too much of Rolex sales. So I feel like I have something quite unique and special because um, not only because I got some, I got an old watch new but uh, I got a watch from a Tudor era that um, basically uh, it was a time where a lot of Rolex parts were being used from the bezel to the case to the pushers to the crown to the bracelets and stuff like that um, so you know you're getting an extremely high quality watch for much much less than an actual Rolex but even if you're not just comparing it to a Rolex, um, you're getting an extremely high quality watch for the price that you're paying. So I have done some research as well, as well online and people are modifying these. You can, from what I understand, I can literally just go to a Rolex store and buy like a black bezel if I wanted. Um, I think the black bezel looks quite nice and I might get white dials because um, some contrast going on there on the, on the face. I may either get a white fa white face and keep the black dials, or get or get the white dials and keep the black face. But there's uh, some customizability there, and if I ever want, I can buy a Rolex uh, Oyster bracelet if I want the actual Oyster bracelet on here. 
I could do that as well. And if I want to make my watch look like a transitional period 79 to 80p, I can get a Rolex round too in the back if I really wanted to. But those things don't matter so much to me. Um, it, it is a tutor. I'm not trying to have a Rolex. Um, I don't want to copy a transitional period, but uh, the bracelet is another thing. Uh, if I do feel like the Oyster bracelet is more comfortable, then again, I could get a Rolex Oyster bracelet if I wanted to, and it just pop right on. Um, the other great thing about this watch is if you put on a leather strap, I think this is quite classy enough, quite dressy enough to go to formal dinners and stuff like that. Um, I don't think anyone's going to really look at you in a negative way when you're wearing a Tudor. So overall, I'm extremely happy with this purchase. There isn't actually too much information on this watch out there, which makes it all more appealing. Um, so if you're looking for a chronograph and you happen to stumble across one of these, then I highly recommend you buy one, especially at the prices that they are at. And especially if Swatch does go through with reducing ETA movements um, supply to the rest of the world, then something like this that is housing a the most famous uh, ETA movement out there at the highest quality grade, something like this will probably never ever lose value. Um, and with, a, with actually a, a possible chance of increasing in value. So that's the 79 280p p is for polished lugs and uh it's a mid 90s to watch and i think they discontinued this in 09 i'm not too sure exactly which year but there it is uh that's the two door i hope you enjoyed this uh review and thanks for watching